There we go. Yay! Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Okay, so for anyone who's already joined us, hi, I'm Bonita, and this is Alexandra Victoria. Hi. Um, um, in a few minutes, I will check out and the Akashic Librarians will come into my body to chat with Alexandra Victoria. So um, Alexandra, tell us a little bit about where you are right now and what you're doing, because this is so exciting. So right now I'm in Mexico in Playa de Carmen, and I am staying here with my boyfriend for two months just for some solitude, relaxation, and some heat, because it's 80 degree weather. And obviously, you know, I'm working on my spiritual growth and he's working on his stuff and we're just enjoying Mexico right now. So that's what that we're doing. So and you're going to do um, live stream meditations yes. and things like that. Yeah, so I'll be doing meditations. You guys will get to see the beach. Uh, you get to see all the beautiful things in Mexico that has to offer and just really help you guys, you know, get centered and grounded as times are a bit turbulent right now. <laughs> we want to be at peace and centered. So, you know, I'm being guided to do that. So you'll be seeing that very soon as I get situated because I just arrived here two days ago. So. Okay. Excuse me one moment. I thought Mitzi, the what? Wonder Dog was here, but she's not. So. Ah, I want to meet her, him. I don't know if Mitzi's a girl or a boy. Okay. Before you go and channel, I don't see any comments. I know people are liking us. Do you see comments nope, right now? No comments yet. Yeah, okay, nope. good. So it'll come up. Okay, guys. Yeah. So if you guys want to like write your questions down. Oh, I'll, sorry, Bonita you tell us what's going to happen so no I that's cool no it's it's good that you're taking charge because in like a minute or two i won't even be here okay okay so <laughs> all right so you guys um some of you may remember uh alexandra from uh she like me is a seer she sees the future events and um as you all recall i've live streamed with a variety of seers and each one has a different frequency and like connection with future um and this is really important and it's relevant to what we're the librarians are going to talk about when we um channel and alexandra is a very very talented channel uh for words and also for healing energy and she's you know, she, uh, the librarians love her. They love you so much. They're like getting rowdy behind me. <laughs> so um, when we receive energy and send it forward, we can only receive what we're like open to receive. You know, just like in regular conversation, you know, like I'll talk to my boys and I'll say, we'll have long conversations, but they're playing their video games and later they'll go, what? You never said anything. I'm like, no, we talked about it. You spoke back to me. No. <laughs> so when we tap into the divine, when we have self-doubt or anxiety or when we're constricted by presuppositions, um, then you know, it affects what we're able to receive, but also what our values to us affect what we receive. For people who are really connected with 3D world stuff and physical well being, they'll receive more information about that. For people who are more concerned about karmic lessons, they receive more about that. You know, just as like, if you're going to uh, take a dance class, do you want to tap dance or do you want to do ballet or what? They're all great, but they're different styles. So Alexandra is someone I love working with because she's so open and very cosmic, very multidimensional. <laughs> we get, we're going to get a really high frequency tonight. <laughs> Yes. Um, have fun tonight. Um, Let's have fun. So, um, 
I do want to put in a little plug for both of us before I check out. Uh, for me, go to my website, bonitawoods.org, and um, take a look at the programs. If you really like this sort of thing, I do generally at least two free programs a month. And um, if you join my level one uh, spiritual alchemist, you get automatically notified and registered for the free programs. If you miss them in person, you know, I load them. So, you know, I upload them afterwards so you can catch them on the flip side. Um, and Alexandra, now that you are in Mexico, how can people reach you? So they can reach me at purplehealingllc.com and I offer um, remote healing. I offer intuitive guidance and one-on-one -on -one psychic mentorship and medium, and I'm sorry, not mediumship, meditation um, sessions as well. Um, so, and just to give a shout out to Bonita, without Bonita and her <sighs> teachings, I wouldn't be where I am today. She's one of the few teachers that um, really helped me expand and believe in myself. So, um, and it's because she channeled. So whatever she has to say through whatever the librarians have to say, please know that Bonita is going to take herself out of it and really fully give the message as it is. Um, and it's not biased. So I'm excited. I can't believe I got invited. <laughs> So, um, but yes, you can find my services at purplehealingllc.com. Excellent. <laughs> and for people who are on Facebook, if you go in the description for tonight's event, all that information is there. And uh, if you're not already friends with us on Facebook, feel welcome to friend us. Um, we yes. love friends. Okay. My head's getting all itchy. <laughs> all right. Oh my God. All right, so I'm gonna check out and um, this will be pretty quick. Hmm. 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 Yes, we we are we are coming in. Oh. Oh. We admit we are disgruntled with our conduit for this day. We asked her to meditate and instead she chose to work. So we are aligning her. It is taking a moment. Hmm. But yes, we, we are here. We are pleased to be here with you and our dear young friends, which of course is a joke for while her body in this life is young, we are dear friends with her soul, who of course is much, much older. So perhaps our joke is more entertaining for us than for you. For when we see any of you, we see who you are, the small child of your greater self. And of course, many of you, your greater selves, are also great friends of ours. So we extend our greeting, our most heartfelt greeting to you, the younger aspects of your greater selves. Hmm. It is wonderful. Yes, we to have, have arrived. Hmm. And our friend, how are you in this day? I am feeling wonderful and excited to have you here. What an honor. And Thank you for the reminder about meditation, which is so crucial 
um, to what you're doing today. Yes, we have sent our conduit far away. She did not honor our request, so now she is temporarily banished. Huh. <laughs> Rightfully so. Mm. Yes. So we know there are many on your planet, especially in your nation of the United States who are agitated of what is to come. Yes. We wish to address this for a moment. And certainly we are happy to answer any questions. But we tell you, how is it that you manifest? You manifest by creating a child in your mind, you an imagination, and then you go forward with any of a variety of techniques, depending upon your native and developed skills, to bring the imaginings of your mind into physical reality. Hmm. Some manifest by working with their hands very hard and always envisioning not just here where they are, but what next, what next, what next. Others sit in meditation, wish for something, and it appears. There are many varieties of techniques between these two, but all manifesting begins with imagining and making your imagining a reality. If you wish a positive, happy reality, you must imagine in your mind before it can become your universe, your world, your daily life. If you are agitated and worrying, then what are you imagining? Hmm. So what reality will spring forward from your distress? Hmm. Yes, that makes total sense. Yes, our friend, you have learned manifestation lessons in your life, have you not? Yes, I have. And everything you're saying is so true. And it's actually how I was able to manifest um, traveling to South America for a year. Um, and it started back a while ago and with a lot of meditation and trust and faith and being childlike, which is huge. You must use imagination. It is pivotal to manifestation. Uh, it worked out. And I do believe what you're saying is very spot on and very true, which I hope people understand that. Certainly. And to keep, to maintain the focus upon you, you have had times in this process where you have felt despair, have you not? Oh, yes. There have been times when I wanted to give up because it just got so hard because I, I stopped going into the positive flow and I started, you know, staying into the negative flow. And, you know, sometimes people don't understand what you're doing when you're manifesting. So they can't see how these things are being created. And if you don't have a strong faith, you can be misled. And I had to get back centered a couple of times before I got here. It did take me a while. It wasn't instant, but now I understand. Mm -hmm. Certainly. And you learned your lessons when you had these moments of distress or despair, that there were thoughts and emotions, concepts within you that needed to be adjusted or released. Is this not true? Yes, yes. Uh, part of manifestation is addressing your pain. Um, because your pain can block you from what you so desire. 
And as long as you understand where your pain comes from and you integrate it as part of you and you accept who you are, then that allows for more of what you desire to come forth to you quicker. Um, so I think people have to handle their pain and understand their pain as well as thinking positive thoughts. I think it's important to do both. So you agree this time of great agitation, tremendous pain across your people, across your country, is the perfect fodder for powerful manifestation towards either greater pain or towards release of pain, towards resplendent delight. 100%. We have an opportunity here. And right now we're a bit distracted. Um, but I believe at this time, people should go inwards and feel their pain and release it. So there can be a better outcome. Because I think we are looking outside of ourselves for a result when the result is within and addressing our own needs and wants, whether it's negative or positive. So yes, this is the perfect time. We tell you, across your planet, humanity is in the throes of a magnificent karmic lesson. It is time for humanity to leave the platform of reality you are in and rise up to the next platform a platform of global inclusion. Anything that keeps you too heavy to join this platform of global inclusion, of harmony and caring, anything that keeps you too weighted to feel and find your place there is energy to be healed, evolved, or released. Hmm. 100%. And there are those who worry, so I heal myself and rise to the next platform, but I'm still surrounded by all of this trauma, this terror, this illness. Yes, but as you rise to this platform, you are setting a wonderful example to others who then wish to rise up around you and more and more. You are not responsible for every human on your planet, but you are responsible for yourself. Is it fair to say that I would look at this as a game? I know it seems so real but everybody's having their own experience, whether it's negative or positive, and I'm just the observer, as long as I'm doing my own work and that I am just observing. Is it fair to say that when people are going through their struggles and they're learning how to heal, like you said, that they can just observe without judgment? This is correct. We would not use the word game because this implies that there may be rules and regulations or it may be a frivolous situation. However, the atmosphere of your use of that word is perfect for your path and your destiny. Understood. For any who feel offended by that word, understand this word will not be perfect for you. Look in your heart to see what word does rise up. Each of you has chosen your place, your position. Some, as with our dear friend here, has chosen to be a remarkable teacher and healer. This takes great courage and faith. It takes what you call chutzpah. There, 
certainly we honor you for this. We know the efforts you have put forward to become this person, the many struggles and the tears and the the sorrows and the fears you have experienced to reach this point where you can say, is this possibly like a game? Certainly. And what a wonderful evolution you have taken from the traumatic pain of the central karmic lesson to go closer to the higher perimeter. So you have claimed this word for yourself and learned to be observant without judgment. Thank you for that. Thank you. You have earned this. We honor your efforts. You. But for an other, to evolve may be a different path, not teacher, not public, perhaps an accountant who loves their family, or perhaps a politician who cares about the truth. Hmm. <laughs> Wouldn't it be wonderful if all politicians cared only about representing their constituents and honoring truth? Hmm. That would be lovely. This is where your planet is evolving to. When humanity rises up to the end of this karmic lesson, you will find politicians will be filled with integrity and honesty. That is good to hear. They are always the representative of the emotional state of the people. When the people are in pain, they will put forward painful leaders. One who has poor self-esteem will reach out for those who feed their poor self-esteem, abusers or negators or those who do not pay attention. One who has a very solid self-esteem chooses those who they can look in the eye and see as equal. Yes. So we encourage all people to look in your hearts and say, what is the best within me? And I will grow to this. What is my word? What is my song? What is my path to evolve myself to be my best self for this life? Yes. This is a better use of your energy than worrying about who will win an election and what will happen then. Your worries are based on experiences of the past, yet your future will never be as your past was. This is true. This is Always true. we go to the unknowing. Hmm. Have we questions from the audience? Has anyone typed? little questions for us. They have, so bear with me. I believe Elizabeth Walgren had a question, but I cannot find it. Um, Elizabeth, if you want to retype your question, I'd appreciate that. Um, and I think- No matter, we know, we know our dear Elizabeth. My dear, you 
the lessons we have shared now, you have found meaningful elements in them. You have a tremendous heart. You also have a tremendous need to be there for others, to be dependable. We think this is difficult for you at these times. So you feel a bit shaken. For you also, the path forward will not be the same as the path was behind you. You must manifest new elements for your life. We think today's conversation will be excessively useful for you. And what other questions have we, our dear friend? So um, the next person is uh, Connie Pritz. And she says, will things work out financially if I retire January 2nd, 2021? Mm. <laughs> mm. This is an excellent question. Mm. Your heart is already retired. Yes, we do suggest you follow your heart. However, we suggest for you make your detailed plan then use that as your base to springboard up from. You need your security. We feel that you do not wish to be free floating insecure and you feel how the money may be tight. You don't wish to burn bridges behind you and if you invest money, what will happen to so much unsurety to leave your secure paycheck, yet your heart has already left. You should make your plans, plan A, plan B, plan C, so you know what sort of path is ahead for you and you have your contingencies then understand these plans are not for you to follow, for they are flat and you will be going upward. However, your creative imaginings and problem solving skills will be fired up, inflamed from having this base support. So we suggest to you, check your plans, your heart will tell you what. But we believe your heart has told your brain it is time to retire. Let your brain figure out how to make that happen for you in a way that brings you joyous peace and sleeping well each night. Wonderful. Yes. And have we more questions? Oh, yes, we have more questions, but I do have a thank you for blessings uh, from Yolanda uh, with your presence today. And then we have my uncle um, who says, I don't know why my love life is always troubling. The question is for me, but I think you'll be able to answer that. Hmm. <laughs> Mm. So we will speak generally, which is in affairs of the heart. We desire what we were taught to desire when we were young as children. Sometimes this is in conflict with what is for our best personal interest when what is good for one is stability but what one 
Reeves is insanity, these two will never mesh well. But when the stability leaves one mm, mm, cold, is undesirable, but the insanity is short living at best, one needs to find in one's core being, what does one truly crave? Look to the patterns that were revealed to you when you were a child, how your parents loved or lacked love, what you saw in your environment, what your culture taught you, you are expecting to have, and look at what truly makes you happy. What qualities do you look for in a dearest friend that you can count on? Hmm. Hmm. It will take much self-exploration to release the notions that were taught to you and embrace the notions that are truly fulfilling within you and then acknowledge that you deserve the fulfilling relationship within your core. We are not sure if we are coherent. Our friend, do we make sense to you with this? Yes, that was the perfect answer. Wonderful. And now we have Patricia, and her question is, is my work to raise the world's vibration be through writings of both children and adult self-help books? Mm. I like that question. We do say yes, but we also say you must invent your own formula. As you read the books that were written before you, you know that you are not meant to mimic others. You, our dear, have such inspired wisdom flowing into you that you must blaze your own trail. This requires a had more faith than you have been exhibiting. For it is not just the faith of the angelic choir that sings to you, but also the faith that you are hearing them with pure ears and the faith that you are worthy of hearing the angels sing. But certainly if you were unworthy, you could be in the midst of the choir and not hear a single note. If you hear them, you are worthy. This is the adjustment you must make within yourself. It throws you off kilter ever so slightly, which then interrupts your ability to process what you receive into the blessed product. Yes, this is how we see it. When you have absolute faith in your worthiness, so much light will open ahead of you and your book and books will almost appear out of thin air. In your mind, you will see them so strongly, you feel you can pull them out of your head, they will be in your hands. When you are fully, fully acknowledging that, yes, the mere fact that you hear what you hear means you are the worthy one to hear it. And you may know this is true, for we tell you it is. Yes. The next question is from Kitty. 
is there anything I can do differently now in order to make more friends or should I just keep developing what I'm doing now? Oh, we are speaking now with a beloved friend. Hmm. Yes, we tell you perhaps the one thing is a little less, a little more harmony and a little less vista. Hmm. But you have been pursuing everything that piques your interest, which we encourage. This is fun for you. We wish you to have more fun in your life. You feel how much empowerment you gain from your joy and your inquisitive nature becoming stimulated. So yes, continue with this, but it is also good to hmm, be a little less frenetic and a little more in harmony with the moment. Allow the moments to expand. There is a time to hop from one moment to another. This is how children play. They do a hopping scotch and a skipping. This is wonderful. But there is also a time to just sit and have a tea party or read a book through from cover to cover and then back again with your favorite stuffed animal beside you. Both are important, but most important of all, our friend, is for you to value yourself and admire how far you have come in such a short time. To, hmm, to understand the extraordinary is not just around you, it is within you, and it is not because the extraordinary is flowing into you, though it is, but it is flowing into you because there is a welcome environment of you, and you are extraordinary. We would like you to meditate more about the fact that you are extraordinary, which is why extraordinary things happen the more you acknowledge your extraordinary nature, the more extraordinary things are happening. This is the manifestation of which we spoke earlier. So yes, keep on as you are, but also hmm, do not wear yourself out. Also enjoy where you are. but continue to enjoy and have fun. We feel we've given conflicting information. Yes, keep exploring everything, but also stay still. But there are times for each, so you do not become fatigued. Yes. Yes, we are. We very much enjoy all these questions. They're wonderful questions. So interesting. They are, they are. And at this time, there are no questions, but everybody is sending you a lot of love. They're saying, thank you, I understand, amen. So let's see. Then at this time, we feel it is time for us to give our farewell. Ooh, and then a question. So in. All right, so we have a question from Yolanda. Mm. What is going on with me? I seem to have no tolerance for those who seem to lack common sense. And I find that I sit down and fall asleep at the drop of a pin, even though I have just woke up. Yes. Yes, our dear, we feel your energy. Yes, it is very distressing and frustrating to be surrounded by those who lack your extraordinary vision. 
It is exhausting. We feel your exhaustion. Hmm. Hmm. We understand you have a desire to be connected with others. It is important for you by your nature to be heard and seen for who you are and heard for what your thoughts and beliefs are, but it is for connection. You are not truly interested in debate, discord, argument. It is more reaching out for kindred. You are an energy connecting person. You work with mandalas, with grids, with networks. When you reach out to one with your beautiful, succulent, brilliant energy and they negate it, of course you are exhausted. We suggest you take a time, take this next week, where you only connect with those with whom you are harmonious and as much as possible limit the news that distresses you. Instead, focus on things that fill you with joy. You are deplete. Honor that you need a little more rest and nourishment to regain your energy, but you also need a recharging. Yes. It is exhausting to be in battle all day, every day, for months on end. And for many of you on this planet now, that is how your lives have been. Of course, you are exhausted. You have been through exhausting ordeal, but there is more to come. So take these breaks for yourself honor yourself it's most important if you find that you have become what you call thin-skinned towards certain beliefs then step away from them this is your psyche telling you that this is not tolerable for you now just as if there is something that you inhale that is toxic, your body responds by choking. You cough. If there is something you eat that is not good for you, your mouth wishes you to spit it out. This is happening. Do not ignore the signs that your being is giving you. Honor them and acquiesce by asking what is the best for me, what is the healthiest for me at this moment, so that I may truly be my best person. Yes, self-care. Hmm. Have we more questions? We do, we have two more questions. Do you have more time? Of course, of course. So we have Patricia again. She has a question. She says, one more. What technique do you recommend for an ascended master to connect to their true existence while living this earthly life? Good question. Ooh, of course. If an ascended master has returned to earth, they either have shut themselves off completely so they have no connection with their true self. So really there's no awakening them for they have closed that off for this life or they have the connection automatically. They just need to acknowledge it. It is a difficult thing for the frail human ego when you go through so many years in your life saying, I am this generic person to suddenly realize, oh, I am an ascended master. Oh, I am connected with very divine beings. It's 
um, hmm, can create temporary insanity and cause trauma for your self-esteem, for your id and ego. So yes, the only way through it is to acknowledge the truth and see what happens. You may make it a private affair at first, if you do not wish to tell your friends and family, oh, by the way, I'm an ascended master and I just found out. If you wish to hold that behind the curtain of privacy, while you are there also behind that private shield, say, I acknowledge, what do we do now? And with full faith, see what happens. Now, we can tell you at this moment on your planet, there are many ascended masters. Some have incarnated and they are here to help the process of your planet's healing. Some have sent small pieces of their souls into life with those. So you may find many people who say, I am Muhammad, I am Jesus, I am Buddha. Yes, of course you are, for each of you have a small piece of these being souls in you to help you. When you believe that you are a master returned to earth, and you meet someone else who is also that master returned to earth, you do not need to fight with each other. What you do is you connect in harmony and you'll see each of you has a slightly different aspect of this master's soul. So you grow and learn from each other. You connect you start calling out to more and more people with little aspects of this master's soul in them. The next thing you know, you have a beautiful mandala of many people with different aspects of a specific master as all of you connect with each other. And this master is shining energy to you you are bringing the lifeblood of the master to our planet for many good purposes. There are also at this time on your planet, many who could have become ascended masters who have been waiting to have this life be their final life or their final necessary karmic life, meaning they may return if they wish, but it's not required. So there are many who are at their final life, ready to ascend. There are others who should have had a few more lives, but they've pushed it to make this their final one so that there may be a mass ascension, not such as you read at in biblical lores. This is for planetary healing. Hmm. But those who pushed it are ones that generally had very difficult lives in this one to wrap up all their karmic lessons and hanging lessons so that they may hit this master role by now. So these are the ones who generally are least likely to think that they could be a master for they'd say, how can I be a master when I had this problem and that issue and I was a thief and a drug addict and I was depressed and this and that, like many, many, many things. I am the bad luck person. Hmm. And just look, you wrapped up seven lives worth of karmic lessons in 30 years. And now you are clean of all karmic requirements and ready to ascend. So this is an excellent question of masters on earth for yes, there are many 
And as you are sitting and worrying about who will be president, what will happen, think better, how can I connect with this network of masters and all those who are here to heal the planet? How can I become my most divine personal self to help myself rise up out of this karmic lesson to the next cycle and inspire others? Hmm. You see, we bring our lesson around full circle with this magnificent question have we answered it coherently she says lord i hope this is my final <laughs> <laughs> you say that now because it's such a mess here but within the 100 years it will be paradise all of you who want this to be your final will be saying please let me return it's so nice there Uh, let's see, did she comment? She said, absolutely, yes. And mm -hmm. so now we have a question from, let's make sure I'm reading this correctly. We have a message from Kim. She says, how do you time stitch? What is that? <laughs> we have such fun with this young thing. So time stitch, you go to a time when there was an occurrence or a frequency that you wish were in the now, you bring that energy to the now and imprint it. So we call it need to be there for others. Hmm. Yes, time is a lucid creature, is it not? So we call it time stitching for you begin here, you go to another time. It can be also a dimension or a frequency, but you go to another time, you claim that energy, bring it to here and imprint it. So it's very similar to stitching Say if you are putting a patch on a tear rendered in your cloth. We call this time stitching. It can be as commonplace as when you need courage in a moment, you think back to a time when you were courageous, bring that energy with you and go forward. Or when you are sad, and you think back to a time when you were happy and you bring that energy, this is a three-dimensional form of time stitching. But now, while there is much illness and distress on your planet, if you time travel back to when your planet was very healthy, we are teaching our students, one of whom is this delightful Kim, to go back in time to when humans were what you call primitive, but we see as much more evolved than you are now, for humans lived as one with the planet and were dimensional travelers, had much enlightenment and great magics. If you go back in time to then and imprint with this energy and bring it to the now, you are giving healthy food for the present moment in your earthly environment. This is time stitching. It is a matter of remembering who you are, how magnificent you are as an individual and as a species. Okay, and then we have Kitty. In the quest I am on at this time, will I find out what I'm looking to know? <laughs> Our dear kitty, once you find it, you will realize it's only the appetizer, the precursor to what you really wish to know. 
So the answer is both yes and no. For yes, you will discover what you're looking for, but in that process, you will see how much more you wish to look for. You will always be going forward looking for more for that is in your nature. So your answer is yes and no. But yes, the detailed thing you're looking for, you will understand and it will make great sense to you. You will release a great deal and reabsorb a great deal. This will catapult you to your next Oh, now that I know this, what else do I need to look for? That is your nature. Hmm. So it looks like they're all talking about stitch right now. Everybody's commenting on that. We had a little joke about Mercury retrograde because I made a boo-boo. <laughs> uh, let's see. Are there any more questions? I think that's it. Oh, this is wonderful. We tell you all our friends, your planet is in your hands. Your future is in your imagining. Make the most of it and enjoy. Oh. Yes. Yes, everybody. Okay, Kitty saying thank you. Hmm. We thank all of you and our dear friend, we thank you. And now we will release, the conduit will return in a brief moment. It was a pleasure, thank you. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. How are you feeling? A little uh ooh. Yeah. Um wow. I would sort of they had me in like an antechamber towards the end so I could sort of hear what they were saying. And I can't tell you how many times they're like, yes, yes, you can come down. No, go back, go back. I'm like, what? I know, everybody um, was asking amazing questions. Like I learned about time stitch, right? Is that what it's called? Time stitch and all this cool stuff. Everybody asked beautiful questions. Librarians oh. They made fun of you a little bit because apparently you didn't meditate beforehand. I didn't. I didn't. Today, you know, I... um. I, because I just bought this house in Maine and then like, and it's out in the middle of nowhere on a mountain. So everyone's been teasing me about how my little Nissan Versa note is like inappropriate because like, you know, and so I, I had all these guys now, they've been telling me like, you need to get a four wheel drive pickup truck. You need to get a bulldozer you need to get i don't know they're talking about all this equipment and stuff and i was looking i'm like i don't want to spend fifty thousand dollars on a big pickup truck like that's my budget for building my greenhouse like i don't i'm like i'm not gonna take my i want a greenhouse i don't want a big pickup truck so i spent <laughs> all day just like dealing with that and the librarians were like girl <laughs> So I did meditate. I did meditate, but um, they wanted me to spend the whole day in meditation. And I was like, oh, gosh, really? As like, guys, you know, uh, put yourself to work. Manifest for me the perfect vehicle. Yeah. 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 So I will say about um, the time stitching, they, um, if you go on my website, bonitawoods.org, Every Wednesday night, I channel the librarians from Eastern Standard Time, uh, 7 to 8.30 p.m. We meet, and uh, they teach us a lot about skills like time stitching and, like, connecting with humanity 
back when, like, oh my God, humans were freaking amazing once upon a time. And they take us to other, like everything is developing skills for us for like claiming and evolving our planet and our race. So um, join us Wednesday nights. I'll put a link here, but it's at my website and it's pretty obvious. It's pretty big. Well, um, what's it called? I think, I think Patricia said the home is beautiful. Just get chains for your tires. You'll figure it out. (laughs) Got it. Oh, well, thank you guys all so much. No, no wonder, no wonder they were bouncing me out. It's seven o'clock. This is like perfect time. Right. Right. Well, thank you for having me. I had so much fun doing this. There are a lot of fun and the questions were awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I could hear It's like they had me elsewhere, but I can kind of, it's sort of like you guys were in one side of a big room and I was in another side having another conversation. So okay, I'm like, oh, that's, but, you know, I have to stay over there or, or I'll mess with their ability to do with you. So I'm going to have to go back and watch all this. You got to follow what they got to say. Aww. Yeah. But thank you all so much for joining us. Thank you. And thank you, Alexandra, Victoria. Thank you. This was awesome. Have a good night, everyone. Have a good night.